Boom! Shake the room, Fire Nation. JLD here, and welcome to Entrepreneurs on Fire, brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network with great shows like Being Boss. Today, we're pulling a timeless EO Fire Classic episode from the archives, and we will be breaking down how to hack your health, physical, emotional, spiritual, and financial game-changing practices with Allison Melody. Allison is an echo entrepreneur with a passion for film, fitness, and food. Her endeavors... Her endeavors include podcast hosting, filmmaking, and motivational speaking. She hosts the top-ranked Food Heals podcast, owns the film production company Melody Productions, and speaks at events across the U.S. and Europe. In today, Fire Nation, we will talk about how you can't win at the highest level unless you've got a well-rounded balance mentally, and we'll talk about why and how food does heal, and how trying one thing at a time is so powerful, and so much more when we get back from things in our sponsors. Turn your small e-commerce business into the next big thing with Klaviyo. Klaviyo is the easy to use email and SMS platform that gives you everything you need to build genuine relationships with your customers. Give it a try with a free account at klaviyo.com slash fire. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O.com slash fire. Stories are what help us connect and relate, which is why I'm hearing someone else's story to success can help us clearly map out our own. That's why I'm excited to share the Female Startup Club podcast. Tune in for stories and insights from the world's most successful female founders today. Listen to the Female Startup Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Allison, say what's up to Fire Nation and share something unique and interesting about yourself. Hey, JLD. Hey, Fire Nation. I'm so excited to be here today. So something that most people don't know about me is that before I started on this crazy entrepreneurial journey that we're all on is that I was in film school and I was in college and my first job in college was actually I was a stand in on a little show called Dawson's Creek. (laughs) And so, yeah, when they do the lighting um, for the before the actors come out, I would stand in for Michelle Williams, who is now Oscar nominated actress. And so I'm just so excited and proud to see how far she's come. And I just remember I started on a little show my whole career. A little show called <laughs> well, I love that. <laughs> and I can't believe I didn't know that about you because you and I actually go back a little ways. You were actually part of the first round of Puerto Palooza. You came down last year to Puerto Rico with uh, four other incredible people for a nice three day weekend where we got to hang out with myself, Kate, and just really get to enjoy the Puerto Rico vibe. And we did a couple days of real business stuff, but then we got out on a yacht and we got to see the the Caribbean a little bit too. Yes. If you need a testimonial, I will be your testimonial. Everyone now that knows that I've done this is like, when can I go? When can I sign up? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I love it. And what I loved about learning about you, Allison, is just how focused you are on the health and the spiritual and the emotional and the financial, like really the full spectrum. Because I'm telling you right now, Fire Nation, from firsthand experience, you are not going to win at a high level unless you've really got a well-rounded balance mentality about health, about wellness, about finances, just about business. Like you need to have the full package because if you're just too one leveled in any direction, something is going to be off. Like if you're too focused, you know, on health and not enough on the business and your business is going to dry up. And if it's the opposite, it's the opposite. So you got, you got to really be having all these wheels moving. And that's what today's masterclass is going to be about. Hack your health, physical, emotional, spiritual, and financial game-changing practices. So this is going to be so valuable. It's going to be one that you go back to time and time again to just remind yourself, like, am I doing these things? Like, am I balanced? Am I centered? Because these are things that are going to make your entrepreneurial journey worth journeying. Because I can tell you, I've had these, again, off balance in my life, and I've had to pull them back in. And when I do, things align correctly. So Allison, let's start off with number one, which is something that I really like talking about because I'd say it's probably my biggest struggle right now, and that's mindful eating. Let's go into that because I think it's something that a lot of us lack for many reasons, but kind of break this part down for us. 
Absolutely. And I couldn't agree more with everything you said. You know, mindful eating is really about as entrepreneurs, we're on the go. We're always running around from appointment to appointment, meeting to meeting, or we're recording. I don't know how many podcasts you do a day anymore, but 10, <laughs> 20 podcasts a day. Just eight. I'm and, down to eight now. It's very reasonable. Okay. That's still quite high. <laughs> like you're actually my last, you're at my eighth interview today. And I'm like, is it really over? Like, I want to talk to some more people. Like, I hope you can hang out after this call. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, I'm glad to hear that you're not super for like exhausted. No. So we'll still have a great interview. I love it. <laughs> so yeah, mindful eating is really just being mindful about not only what you put in your body, which we're going to talk about, but how you're eating. And so if we're mind mindlessly watching TV and stuffing our face with food at the end of a long day, that's really, that food is not going to serve our bodies. We're going to have poor digestion. We're not going to be easily absorbing the nutrients from that food. So mindful eating is really about appreciating the food that you are eating and allowing it to nourish your body. So I almost see it as a break and a meditation in my day. So if I was doing eight podcasts, let's say after <laughs> four, I was going to take a lunch break or perhaps a dinner break, depending on when I was recording, I would sit and I would take that 30 minutes and I would eat in silence. Sometimes I'll put music on, music or silence, but I'm not going to put TV on because that's really a distraction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to eat. I'm going to enjoy the flavors. I'm going to be grateful for the food that I'm eating. And then I can think about some creative ways to, you know, improve my day instead of eating mindfully or eating on the go or eating in the car or just not nourishing your body with good food. So that's what mindful eating is. And it really does make a difference. This is huge for me. I really feel like I am one of those people that are just like, okay, it's break time. I want to eat some food and I want to like pop on my favorite show like Billions or Westworld and just kick back and just like eat. And it's become like a habit for me. It's become like an escape for me, you know, because I, I love to work hard and I love to be able to focus, but I love to be able to take a break from that working hard and focusing and to just completely relax. And then, you know, at the end of the day, like Kate cooks a great meal and it's like 6.37 p.m. She you know, makes a big bowl. It's a healthy bowl of food, but you know, it's a bowl of like vegetables and quinoa and different things. And, but then what am I doing? Like I'm sitting in front of the TV and she's sitting in front of the TV and we're just kind of like sp spooning food into our mouths kind of mindlessly. And you're right. Like <laughs> I'm not thinking about how good this food tastes and I'm not like chewing it properly. And, and guess what? I'm probably, I'm getting full, but I'm still eating because I'm just not thinking yep. about it. I'm enjoying the show. So that's where that word mindful, I think really comes in. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm making a commitment to you, Allison. And after this, I'm going to talk to, to Kate as well. I want to start eating, you know, out in that kitchen terrace. We have that beautiful kitchen terrace overlooking the Caribbean. Why are we not yeah. just sitting out there eating, enjoying the food, enjoying the ocean breeze and doing it that way instead of mindlessly down that little entertainment room pit that we have, like watching a show? Absolutely. I love that visual of you two sitting out there and, and just enjoying each other's company. And I will say that I don't do this at every meal, JLD. I certainly watch my Beverly Hills Housewives <laughs> and eat sometimes. Like It's not something you have to practice every single day with every single meal. But the more you practice it, the better you're going to feel. And you also have some things in this area about more plants, food allergies, blood type vitamins. Like, Let's kind of talk a little bit about that before we move on to the next section. Yeah. So besides being mindful while you're eating, you got to be mindful of what you eat. And so I discovered this, you know, in my 20s. When I was growing up, we had no awareness of food or health or nutrition. I didn't care. I didn't know about it. No one was talking about it. And it wasn't of interest to me. And it wasn't until, you know, I had struggles with both of my parents where my mom was suffering from multiple sclerosis. And then unfortunately, she got cancer shortly after. And the doctors at the time didn't tell us anything about nutrition or the power of the body to heal itself. All they said was drugs, chemotherapy, and surgery are your only options, but she's probably going to die anyway because the cancer is far too advanced. And so I had to sit there and do nothing because I didn't know any better and watch my beautiful mother pass away um, one month before I graduated college. And that was really a turning point for me when it comes to health because I saw Western medicine completely fail my mother and I realized there had to be a better way to heal your body and I was like on a mission to find out what it was and so slowly over the next few years I discovered nutrition and I realized that the body has the ability to heal itself if given the tools that it needs to do so. So this was a wake-up call for me. So I started lecturing my father on his 
uh, excessive use of pharmaceutical drugs, of his poor diet, just eating whatever was in front of him or getting fast food, you know, not cooking and, and, and really enjoying food and not choosing healthy choices. He was also drinking and smoking. Uh, but he didn't want to listen to me. And so, you know, that was another lesson in my life that just because we have a spiritual, emotional or uh, physical awakening, it doesn't mean that someone else is going to. And so as I'm learning about health and healing, he is actually getting worse and worse to the point where he got cancer as well. Mm. So here I am, I'm 25 years old, and I've lost both of my parents to cancer. And again, I've seen Western medicine fail. So that basically catapulted my mission to make sure that no one ever had to suffer that the way that they suffered and no one should go through what they went through and what I went through as a daughter losing both of them. And so that's my mission today is to really teach people the healing benefits of food, that there is so much power in plants. And if we choose every day to put something in our body that truly nourishes us, we can be around, we can live till we're 100 and we can still be hustling our entrepreneur life. We can still be biking across. I have people that run marathons across Australia, you know, in their 60s, survived breast cancer. I've interviewed people who have done incredible things and it's all because they hacked their health. And so when it comes to nutrition and diet and exercise, you know, I'm a proponent of learning your food allergies because everyone is different. So for me, I found out, this is terrible, but I had a food allergy to coffee. Okay. Oh no. Was it coffee or just caffeine in general? It was coffee beans. And uh. so I know I wanted to cry, but what it meant for me was it didn't mean I could not have it at all. It just meant I could not have it every day. Mm. And so that's something that I have to have every few days because it takes my body longer to process it than it does someone else's body. Someone else might be totally fine with it, right? And so it's discovering what works for you. So you can get a food allergy test and find out what your body is allergic to. I also had dairy. When I gave up dairy, my life changed. I can't even tell you. Um, my face cleared up. I have not had acne or a single pimple or a bump on my face since giving up dairy. My digestion changed. I started um, being able to absorb the nutrients from food better. I started feeling better. So all of these things really added up to the fact that I was discovering what worked for my body. And for me, it's a plant-based diet. It may not be for everyone, but I eat a whole foods plant-based diet and it's completely changed my life. Wow. Now, I don't know if you were here when I, if I had this product, but they've been a sponsor of Entrepreneurs on Fire for a while, Four Sigmatic, which is mushroom coffee. Does that work for you? Totally. Oh, I really? Love Sigmatic. Yeah, I can do. There's a lot of herbal things that I can do. And I still drink coffee, but just not every day. Let's talk a little bit about blood type. This is a tough one because there is a lot of science behind it, but there's also a lot of people who say it's BS. So you have to do your own research and decide what works for you. But the first time I ever went to an acupuncturist and chiropractor, this was actually in North Carolina while I was going through my health discovery. You know, when I was in North Carolina losing both of my parents, there weren't um, juice bars in every corner right. and people in Lululemons, yoga mats, you know, green smoothies everywhere like there are today. But what happened was I was in North Carolina and I went to an acupuncturist for chronic fatigue and they did food allergy tests and they did a blood type test. And I discovered that my blood type was A, which is primarily, you know, you should eat according to the blood type diet, a vegetarian diet. So that's when I started getting off all of the meats and that completely changed my body too. It changed. I was losing weight. I was feeling better. I was less fatigued all of these things. And I did it slowly. I didn't do it overnight. You know, none of these are overnight cures. Some people can do things cold turkey. I wasn't able to. So I'm giving up things over time and my body is starting to heal itself and become better and better. And so the blood type diet is something that if you want to look into, you can go to a holistic health practitioner and they can determine your blood type. And there's a book you can read and it tells you exactly what foods are best for your blood type. I actually read that book. I don't remember what O positive was, you know, off the top of your head. I think that's a meat eating diet, actually. Meat eating? Oh, <laughs> give me that filet. So. Give me that filet. Uh, <laughs> I believe you'll have to check. I'm not an expert on this. Okay. I do. I think I read it back in 2012, actually. So it's, it's been a while. Yeah. So I got to go back to that for sure. But let's talk about yeah. some vitamins. What's the deal with vitamins? Yeah. So this is a great one. So all of these tests we're talking about can actually be done at a functional medicine doctor's place. So what they can do is they will test your blood, your stool, your spit, your hair, everything you can think of, they will test. And you can find out what vitamins are you actually deficient in in the current diet that you're eating. So 
I live in a completely different place than you do, JLD. And so you may have different vitamins in your soil from the fruits and vegetables that you're eating than the ones that I do. And so for me, I could be deficient in something that you're totally not or vice versa because we live in different areas. It depends on where our food is coming from and, of course, what kind of diet we eat. And so when I discovered, oh, I was deficient in B12, I had to up the levels of B12 in my body to bring my back body back to homeostasis. And so a functional medicine like doctor, like Dr. Stephen Cabral, who we both know from Porta Palooza. We both know the, and love. <laughs> love, yes. He is one of my favorite go-to people on this. He will do all of these tests for you. He will, well, you do the test yourself. And then what happens is a functional medicine doctor, such as Dr. Stephen Cabral, can recommend you exactly what you need to get your levels in balance so that all of your hormones are balanced, all of your vitamin deficiencies are addressed, all of that good stuff. So you are at your best. Mm. There is no perfect diet and vitamin combination for anyone. It is all individualized depending on your individual needs. So his book, The Rain Barrel Effect is out. Have you got to read it yet? It's sitting in front of me right now because he <laughs> was just here. He was in LA um, a couple of days ago. Oh, so cool. Did a live podcast. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Such a great dude. Um, actually alumni of Providence College like me. He was two years ahead of me and just a great, he has a great daily podcast called The Cabral Concept. And actually while we're at it, let's talk about the Food Heals podcast. What's going on with that, Allison? Sure. Um, well, I started in um, 2015 and Food Heals was just my passion project. And I was like, well, let's see if this can fly. And so, you know, as Pat Flynn says, will it fly? It flew. <laughs> it flew. And so, yeah. And I was um, listening to your um, How to Start a Podcast podcast. I remember I would be at the gym and I would be listening to your podcast and coming up with ideas for my podcast. Yay. I definitely, yay, appreciate <laughs> You know, I was sales funneled. You know, now I'm a member of Podcasters Paradise and <laughs> it's been hugely beneficial to me and the work that I do. And so I started the podcast, you know, it's been two and a half years. And it's been one of the most exciting things I've ever done because I've gotten to meet people I would never get to meet. Like I can't ask someone like Gabrielle Bernstein to go to coffee with me, but I can ask her to be on my podcast and I have a platform to share her story. And so it's a win-win for everyone. Yeah. Oh. And so the Food Heals podcast, we just interview people who've healed themselves of chronic degenerative diseases and how they've done it through nutrition, through spirituality, all kinds of stuff, alternative medicine. And that's really the mission is to share other people's and stories to inspire others that, you know, we can heal ourselves. Our health is in our hands. Because food does heal Fire Nation. If there's one thing that I've learned over the years, you know, as I approach my 40s now is, you know, so many people get obsessed with like chronic cardio and just working out, working out, working out, because guess what? Then I can cheat with this, that, or the other thing. Listen, you, you can go that route and you're going to struggle or you can just really be intentional and focus on the stuff you're putting into your mouth and the food that's going into your body. That's what's going to be the game changer. So Allison, let's talk about intermittent fasting because, you know, there's a lot that goes around about intermittent fasting. Like some people do the two and five or like five days of regular eating, two days of fasting. Some people do like the 16 and eight. So can you kind of talk a little bit about that and the benefits of intermittent fasting? I love intermittent fasting. I was under the wrong full impression that for my body, because, and this is because in a long time ago, maybe four or five years ago, a holistic health practitioner, she was a nutritionist, told me that I needed to eat every few hours because I had low blood sugar. So I subscribed to that myth for years, JLD. I really thought I have to eat every few hours so I would always have something near me. Now, is that true for some people? Sure, 100%. I'm not knocking it as a concept. But for me, it could not have been further from the truth. Here I am eating every few hours, even if I'm eating healthy apples, salads, nuts, whatever, juice. I was still never feeling like I was thriving. I was still having bouts of energy up, down, up, down, up, down, like you have with sugar or coffee, you know. And so I didn't know what I was doing wrong. I thought I was doing everything right. Then I decided to try intermittent fasting. I had done juice cleanses before and I had done, I had lost five pounds on a juice cleanse in five days and the health benefits, my face, my skin, I looked younger in five days. I mean, the health benefits were incredible. So I was definitely interested in fasting, but I had never tried intermittent fasting. And so the way I started was I already didn't eat breakfast. I'm not a big breakfast girl. So it was actually kind of easy for me to skip breakfast. I would make a smoothie, but what I ended up doing was just pushing my smoothie. So I started out just not eating until 12 or one o'clock and then making sure to wrap up and not eat again until after eight o'clock. 
So I was like, oh, this is easy. I can do this. Then I shortened the window. When I shortened the window, I started feeling fantastic. I had more focus throughout the day. So now if I don't eat until four o'clock, my hustling entrepreneurial self can get way more done in that span of time. And for me, it was a game changer. What I think is important, Allison, and you've made this very clear, but I want to make it even more clear for you, Fire Nation, is Allison is not saying this will work for you because it works for her. She's saying, just like I'm saying, this works for her. This is what works for me. The best thing that you can do when you're listening is saying, hey, how's things in my life working right now? If your answer is not so good health-wise, energy-wise, you know, facial complexion-wise, all these different things, then you start testing some things. Then you try intermittent fasting. Maybe then you have your last meal at 8 p.m. and your first meal again at noon. And then if that works and you want to try to shrink it, and then guess what? That might not work for you. Then you bring it back out. To me, it's all about your body is so unique, you know, as similar as we are in so many ways to, you know, different people, we're so different at the same time. you know, what's great for me could be horrible for Allison and vice versa or somewhere in the middle. So test, test, test. I mean, that's one thing that I'm kind of excited about, Allison, is like, I know that till the day that I die, I'm going to be continuing to tweak and adjust some things. And to me, I love that. <laughs> yes, exactly. I'm a biohacker. Like, what else can I try? Yes, I love this. So what are some of the benefits of intermittent fasting? I mean, there's that cleansing, detoxification. Like, what are some of the real benefits that you found throughout that? There is the notion that after a certain amount of hours, your body starts burning fat. And so I love that because who doesn't want to burn fat? I still got love handles. I'm like, what are these doing here? <laughs> so if I can burn a little fat, I'm, I'm all for it. Bye-bye, so muffin things. top. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And when I started JLD, I lost 10 pounds right off the bat without wow. changing anything else. And I was like, oh, this, is, this <laughs> works. Now, what do you do day to day to move your body? I mean, that's kind of one thing that we haven't chatted about yet. Like, what do you do exercise wise, like yoga wise? Like what is non food wise that you're doing to really make this happen? Okay. So my two go to's, which again, just like you said, find what works for you. But it took me a long time to discover what I really loved and making sure that exercising was something I wanted to do and was not a chore that I was subjecting my body to, but instead was a joy to move my body. So my two favorite things are running and Pilates. Now, I'm not a fast runner. I'm not a marathon runner. I'm not a sprinter, but I enjoy jogging to music or jogging to my favorite podcast. It brings a much needed break into my day. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel powerful. Um, I like listening and absorbing information just like while people drive, they like listening to audiobooks or podcasts, just like when I run, I listen to the entire first ep first season of serial while jogging. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did that. What was the book born to run, which is the autobiography of the guy that uh, created Nike. And I'm telling you like, that was like an eight hour audiobook and I was out running and I'm like, I just don't want to stop. And like, yeah, I walked plenty, but I listened to the entire thing in one day. It was unbelievable. Oh my gosh. Now I have to listen to that. That sounds so great. It's okay, nothing better to me was to be outside and then to just be listening to this book about running and the birth of Nike and it's such an entrepreneurial story. It was so cool. So recommend that to, to anybody listening, Fire Nation. It's awesome. And speaking of biohacking, you know, there's definitely been something that's been coming up because I've been studying a lot of this myself. I'm actually about to do a decade in a day, which is going to be a really great one day thing where I'm kind of going through all these different tests and, and different things. And one of those is, is going to be involving the Wim Hof breathing method. I've been seeing that and, you know, I've been really focusing more myself on breathing and really learning how to belly breathe and to deep breathe and not be a shallow chest, chest breather. So talk a little bit about the Wim Hof, Hof method, like what you've discovered and how you use it. Oh my gosh, this is one of my new ones that I've become recently obsessed with. And this is what I do. And maybe a lot of you can relate um, when I discover something new, whether it's something in the entrepreneurial space or something in the health space, I become obsessed with it for a little while. And then it kind of tinkers off when I see how I'm going to incorporate it into my life. Um, but really, so Wim Hof, the breathing is part one, and then the cold therapy is part two. And so if people don't know about 
cold therapy. There are many ways that you can do this, whether it is in an ice bath in your home or whether it is through cryotherapy, which is something that you can do um, at a practitioner's place, probably somewhere in your town. It's going to bring your body temperature so severely down that your body has to heal itself. And so it sends out all these healing endorphins and 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 your body is going to completely transform in that small amount of time. And so the Wim Hof method is all about exposing yourself to that cold, but you're also going to do this breathing exercise that really heightens your oxygen levels. And it gets you into this place of meditation that I've never felt before. And so the point of it, of all of this is you're going to get, you know, clarity of mind, more energy. It's going to reduce your stress levels. Um, it's going to boost your immunity. So they will do this with a lot of, um, cancer patients in alternative, you know, healing methods, because it is something that can get your body to heal itself very quickly when practiced regularly. Now, of course, like everything, this is something to try. The first time I tried to put myself in an ice bath, I almost thought I was going to die. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is not for me. And, you know, he has trips where you go to the coldest place <laughs> right. in the U.S. He's crazy. And I... I, yeah, I'm not ready for that. I will tell you, I like the at home version that I can do. And like everything else, please consult a physician. <laughs> do not take my advice on this. But as an explorer in holistic health, I love this stuff and the breathing. So there are a few different types of um, breathing exercises that have truly gotten me to a state of mental clarity I've never been to before. So Wim Hof, you know, teaches this. You can watch the videos online of how to do it. There's a breath work circle here in LA where they, they do this breathing work that takes me to another place. And sometimes you're having a memory or you're crying and sometimes you're just feeling the most peace you've ever felt. But these are super healing because when we go into our psyche, into those un to those buried emotions that we push down and we allow them to come to the surface, we are truly healing ourselves, mind, body, and spirit. And so that's, I think, part of Wim Hof. It's also part of Kundalini Yoga, which um, Breath of Fire is something that has completely changed my world, rocked me to the core, where it also can get me into a state of peace like I've never felt before. And so if you're one of those people that say, I can't meditate, I can't quiet my mind, I get you. Oh my God, I've been there 100%. But if you look into Wim Hof, if you look into Kundalini, you might just be able to get there and you'll be in this incredible state where you'll have so much clarity, whether you need clarity on your business, where you need clarity on a relationship. It's like tapping into your psych, your own psychic ability where you can create the path that is best for you by doing these breathing techniques. So kind of maybe quickly go through, just like not the, through the whole technique, but like what does it look like doing the Wim Hof breathing technique, the breath of fire? Okay, so you kind of sit down in meditation. So what you wanna do is um, I cross my legs, but I open my hands. And so you wanna make sure that you can like expand your lungs and you don't wanna feel constriction. And you wanna do this alone, don't let anyone be home. Maybe put the dog somewhere where they're not gonna bark. I know my dogs go crazy when the mailman comes <laughs> over, all that stuff, because that'll kind of take you out of it. And um, you wanna do it after waking up. You don't wanna do it on a full stomach. You wanna do this, you wanna do this kundalini yoga, anything like that um, on an empty stomach before you eat, all that good stuff. So. You're going to do inhaling through the nose or the mouth, and you're going to exhale through the mouth. And these are going to be short and powerful. So it's like, I can try to do it real quick on here, but I'm going to be like, <laughs> <laughs> can you? <laughs> yeah, I can hear <laughs> it. <to> get it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you're going to do this as many times as you can. So sometimes people will set a timer. So in class, we do it for three minutes straight. Um, some people, you want to do it for 30 breaths just to start to see how far you can go. You're going to start feeling lightheaded. That's usually A little usually tingling in the I finger feel. sometimes. Yes. So you know what I'm talking about, Oh, I've right? done it. I've done it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So feel free to weigh in if your experience is different. Um, but you're, yeah, you're going to start feeling tingly. You're going to start feeling calm. And then what you're going to do is you're going to hold your breath as long as you can. And then you're going to let it out ah, as long as you can. Okay. So you're going to do it for, you know, 
When you're starting out, try 30 breaths. You can work your way up to say five minutes or more. It really depends on where you are in your practice. There are some times when I can go longer and sometimes I can't even get through 30. It depends on where I am. Yeah. Where's my emotional state? Like, what am I feeling that day? How was my week been? And so what you're going to do is you're going to slow down and then you're going to recover. When you feel like you've gone far enough, you're going to hold your breath until you absolutely you know, need to let go. And then you're going to let it go. And now you are in recovery. Okay. Yes. Yes. Fire breath. (laughs) Yes. Fire nation needs to do fire breathing. (laughs) And I will say I've had a lot of luck. Um, just go to, go to Google type Wim Hof. That's yeah. W I M H O F. And then just breathing. There's actually a really cool one. I don't know if you've watched it yet, uh, Allison, but with, uh, Lewis house at Lewis's place, he's laying down on the couch, has like 1.6 million views where it's just Wim Hof right there over Lewis, basically like guiding him through that method. It was pretty cool. Pretty cool video. Okay. So watch, don't listen to me. Watch that video because that is probably <laughs> much better. <laughs> it is from Wim Hof after all and fire nation. Okay. Value bombs have been dropped. More coming up when we get back from thinking our sponsors. It's hard to believe we're approaching the end of another year. And now more than ever, it's so important that we as business owners are connecting with our customers. It's a busy buying time. And the more touch points you can create, the better. So how do you create these touch points? With a HubSpot CRM platform, a platform ready to help you connect the dots with your business and your customers. Whether you're just getting your business up and running or scaling to what's next, a couple of ways a HubSpot CRM platform can help you connect the dots is with brand new custom behavior behavioral events and their operations hub enterprise. With custom behavioral events, you can get into the details of what makes your customers tick, track site behavior, and understand customer habits so you know what type of messaging to use and when. And their operations hub enterprise will give your operation leads the ability to curate data sets for faster and more consistent reporting, keeping everyone on the same page at all times. Learn more about how a HubSpot CRM platform can help connect your business at HubSpot dot com. Getting an online business off the ground isn't easy. There are a lot of moving pieces when it comes to building an e-commerce brand. So if you find yourself working late, tackling a to-do list that's a mile long with your fifth cup of coffee by your side, remember, great email doesn't have to be complicated. That's what Klaviyo is for. Klaviyo is the email and SMS platform built to help e-commerce brands earn more money by creating genuine customer relationships. Once you set up a free Klaviyo account, you can start sending beautiful brand and messages in minutes thanks to drag and drop design templates and built-in guidance. And with e-commerce specific recommendations and insights, you can keep growing your business as you go. Get started with a free account at clavio.com slash fire. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash fire. So Allison, we're back and I'm going to throw a little bit of a curveball because this actually isn't something that uh, we talked about previously, um, but what are your thoughts on infrared saunas? Do you have any experience with that? I'm obsessed. I own my own infrared sauna that I bought off Amazon. They're not even that expensive, a couple hundred bucks. And um, according to Dr. Stephen Cabral, who we are both friends with that we mentioned earlier, 19 minutes a day in an infrared sauna can actually reduce the risk of heart attacks by over 60% and most causes of death, like, you know, chronic debilitating disease by 40%. Yeah. I don't know of any drug that can do that. No do drug you? can do that. No drug can do that. And I'm actually really glad that um, you are on board with this because I will say I looked at Dr. Cabral one day, we were just hanging out. I think it was actually at my um, lake house in Maine. He came to visit <clears throat> and I go, Dr. Cabral, what's one thing, one thing of, you know, there's a million things I could do, but what's one thing you think I could implement into my daily routine that's not obnoxious, that doesn't make me, you know, like, you know, buy an $800,000 freezing plunge pool or something, you know, but (laughs) something that's reasonable that I can do every single day that's going to massively impact my life. And he didn't even blink or, or skip a beat. He looks at me, he goes, buy an infrared sauna. And so yeah. I was like, seriously? He's like, yeah. And so he gave me the link. Mine's actually a little more expensive than yours. It's called, a, he recommended the Therasage. So Therasage, I think it was 750, 800 bucks. And it, it it's not big, by the way. It's not like this huge sauna you're probably picturing, Fire Nation. It's, it literally like 
packages down to like a mini little suitcase. But then when you yep. expand it out, you know, you sit in the middle of it, you zip it up to your neck and you turn it on and then boom. And I do that now, Allison, 30 minutes every single day. I'm talking like I probably have averaged over the past like four or five months, like 5.5 days a week. Like I almost never miss my 30 minute at 150 sitting in that infrared sauna. I love it. I am so impressed by you because I only use mine like three times a week. And I think that's pretty darn good. (laughs) It is really good, but I'm just that kind of person, Allison. You know, for me, it's either all or nothing. So it either has to be part of my morning routine or it's dead to me. It's like one of those things. And so I have to make it every single day. And it literally, it's like seven days a week when I'm in Puerto Rico. The only days I'm kind of uh, saying is when I'm like traveling for conferences and stuff like that. And I obviously don't have it with me, but I mean, like it's something I do every single day that I'm here in Puerto Rico. You sit and you just sweat for 30 minutes. And, you know, I don't know how people feel about sweating. I've always loved it because I've always kind of like like assimilated it with like sports and activity and just healthiness and all this stuff. But I can literally just like feel my pores just like opening up and just emptying out like the heavy metals and the toxins and just releasing all that stuff. And after the shower, after my um, uh, infrared sauna, it's just like I've never felt more fresh. Like that's the freshest I've ever felt. Okay. I have a question for you. Go for it. Do you do it after you do a run up submarine hill? (laughs) You know, fire nation, no submarine hill. I've talked about it enough. And the answer is I do. Uh, I do. I've done that many, many times. Typically though, my morning routine now is I wake up civil twilight, which is about 15 minutes before the sunrise where the sun's still six degrees below the the horizon. And I start my, my yoga practice. I don't, I don't think I've even told you this yet, but I've actually started doing daily yoga now. It's new for me. I'm like on day 40 of daily yoga right now, right? Just get up. I do yoga with Adrienne. It's a awesome free series on YouTube. I highly recommend it. It's amazing. Yoga with Adrienne and I just do it. And it's a daily practice and I do yoga and the sun comes up over the the Caribbean. It hits me in the face. I'm doing yoga. Then after yoga, I either number one, do 20 minutes on my rowing machine or number two, I um, have my workout with Jeff McMahon, my virtual trainer. And then after that is when I sit down in my therisage in my gym down there that you've seen down by my pool. And I do my 30 minutes of infrared sauna. So that's my morning routine. So in the evenings now, I still sometimes do go for runs up submarine hill, probably like three days a week I'm averaging right now. And I will say that when I get back from those runs, and if I haven't done a morning infrared, I definitely do on them. Beautiful. I love this. And the reason I asked is because I had someone on the podcast and I showed them the infrared sauna and blah, blah, blah. And we were talking about fat burning. And they said one of the best ways to burn fat is to exercise to sweat, whether it's running or something else, and then sit in that sauna for 30 minutes. And that's going to detox out of your tissues even more than you could have detoxed if you did it without um, sweating prior. So I think that was really interesting. So I do try to incorporate them both at once when I can, but I don't always just like you. It's what, what can you fit into your day that particular day? But one thing we haven't talked about is detoxing and an infrared sauna is a huge addition to any type of detox. And so, you know, we are exposed to toxins on a daily basis that we can't control, even if we are health hackers, like it sounds like you are and and that I am. (laughs) I'm getting there as well. (laughs) Yeah, like you're working on it and you think you're doing your best, but we're still exposed to toxins, whether it's totally. in our shampoo or lotion or environmental that we can't control from outdoors, from the paints, from off gassing, from things that we've purchased in our home, from the food that we purchased that we thought was healthy that still has, you know, something in it. And so we've got to continually detox. Now, if you read about detoxing on the internet, there are all these articles that say, oh, well, the body naturally detoxes. And so all the detox stuff is a myth. Well, let me call BS on that right now, because (laughs) the truth is that we are designed to detox. And that's why our skin is the largest organ of detoxification and why sweating it out really helps. But we are bombarded with more toxic materials than we have ever seen in the history of the world. And so we have to assist our body. 
yes, in the detoxification process. And so infrared sauna is a great way to do that. See, this is why I love like biohacking because you literally like you can, you can just learn so much more every single conversation you have. Like I, now I'm going to be so excited when I work up a little sweat with Jeff in the morning or after my, um, rowing machine. And I'm like, yes, now I'm sitting in that sauna. I'm going to be like, yes, I got a little bit of a sweat going on now. It's going to even help out more now over my next 30 minutes. It's just these little things that you stack on top of each other and they might not seem like a lot at first, but then that compound effect happens, Fire Nation. It just happens. And now let's kind of move a little bit into um, a non-workout kind of area, which I think has been a huge benefit for me. And I saw that you had it down here for your uh, masterclass. So I really want to talk about it because I think it's so important for entrepreneurs and that is blue light blocking. So talk to us about that. Okay. So, you know, studies basically tell us that 60% of people, which is most of us spend over six hours a day in front of a digital device. That's whether me. it's Yeah. I mean, I do it too. I'm totally guilty right now. I am in front. I've got two computers and a cell phone <laughs> sitting right in front of my face. Right. It's like, I'm so guilty of this. And so that's why I need to be more aware of this. And most of us are, Oh, and my iPad too. I've got four digital devices <laughs> in front of me. Okay. Um, so, you know, this is, this is, uh, again, this is stuff we've never seen before. And so we've got to deal with it. And so this lighting is something that can really affect our health. And it makes it really hard for a lot of people to fall asleep. So between that and having all of these internet connected devices and your neighbors, wireless internet, it's all affecting us. And so what we want to do is minimize our exposure to some of these things. So like, EMFs and things like that. I mean, I'm going off on two things, blue light and EMFs, but I feel like they're so related. And so a couple of things that you can do to avoid EMFs and to avoid being bombarded by blue light all day is that when you sit in front of your computer, there are glasses and they have a yellow tint and they block the blue light. And so again, you know, if I didn't get into what blue light can do, it actually can cause macular degeneration over a long period of time. It causes a lot of people headaches. It causes a lot of people chronic fatigue. And so you're wondering why, well, I just worked really hard for five hours and I'm exhausted, but I have five more hours of work to do. It could be solely because you're sitting in front of the computer and your retinas are exhausted by all of this blue light coming in from all of these devices. The sun is blue light as well. And I'm not anti-sun. I'm all about getting that vitamin D. But at the same time, this is actually causing people to have insomnia because if you don't power down those devices and stop seeing that blue light at least two hours before you go to bed, many people literally cannot sleep because of this. And so our cell phones now have, most cell phones, I believe, have it where you can set a time. You can say at 9 p.m., at 7 p.m., whatever. You know, I do it at sunset. So I try to stay close to sunset where it turns off the light and it really creates a, a I don't know what the light is called. I should have looked it up. But it creates a light that is not harmful. So it blocks the blue light so that before you're going to bed, a lot of us are staring at our phones, which we shouldn't be, but we are. Um, and so what you can do is block that blue light so that it's not exposing you to that right before bed and, and preventing you from sleeping and having that deep, restful sleep. I'm telling you right now, I'm wearing my Swanwick blue blocker glasses as we speak. Uh, this has been something that I wish I picked up years ago. I, I, I am a little embarrassed to admit I've only picked it up really about a month ago, but I'll tell you, wearing these blue blocker glasses, like I, I look a little dorky, not too dorky, just a little dorky. Um, but I'll tell you that the eye strain has gone way down. Like even yeah. though it's like 10 AM or 1 PM and I'm wearing these things, I just noticed that I'm just not having that eye fatigue. I used to like rub my eyes a lot and sit back and just kind of like close my eyes and like kind of roll my eyeballs around a little bit to try to like, you know, get them some, like I, what I thought was like needed recovery. But wearing these blue blockers, it just kind of takes that strain away. And now I'll tell you, it's weird that how quickly I adjusted to them. Cause now when I'm not wearing them, I'm almost like squinting. I'm like, how did I ever do this for hours and hours at a time? I mean, I still do it for short periods of time. I go back and forth, but like you said, you know, come 6 PM, 7 PM, the sun's going down here in Puerto Rico. I'm going blue blockers. If I'm watching TV, I got blue blocker glasses glasses on. If I'm, I'm, I'm literally trying right now, two things, actually. Number one, I'm doing that I'm going to try that terrace thing of eating out on the, on the kitchen terrace with Kate, mm. not in front of the TV. And number two, I really want to start putting my phone in airplane mode and just done for the day, 
when the sun yes. goes down. I just want that to happen. I mean, cause I don't do anything valuable or productive on my phone after seven anyways. So like, why do I have it? You know, I just find myself like just going on Instagram, nothing wrong with that, but I don't, you know, I don't need to do that after seven. I mean, I can do that during the day when I'm actually, you know, doing business stuff. So just things like this really stack up. And one thing I want to mention to you, Allison, cause you've already given me so much value on this call today is you mentioned that you have your cell phone on your desk and, and I do as well. I actually have it like right to my right. It's like on a little stand. <clears throat> and I was listening to a podcast about two months ago and they said that there's just been all these studies that have been done where if your phone is within visual range of you, even if you don't actually look at it, it's just your, your five to 10% of your conscious and subconscious is being tugged towards that phone of like, oh, should I check? Because I have it on silent. Does somebody maybe call? Do I maybe have a text? Like, da, da, da. I can just reach over and touch yep. it. What time is it? Let me touch my phone. Let me touch my phone. Let me touch my phone. And it just tugs on you and it really makes it hard to focus at the highest level. Of course you can focus. But we're trying to, you know, maximize what we're doing. So they said the simple act of taking your phone and just putting it, you know, 10 feet behind you on a table behind you, just so it's out of sight, out of mind, you know, not, don't, don't put another room. You don't have to, but just, just put it behind you. So it's not right there on your desk, basically being like, look at me, look at me. (laughs) Somebody might be trying to contact you. That can be an absolute game changer. So I'm telling you, Allison, it's too early for me to tell, to be honest, but I started taking my phone. I put it on my table behind me now, and I just find myself not like, no, actually, let me rephrase that. I found myself reaching for where it used to be on the stand. I'm like, why did I just do that? The phone's not even there. And that made me realize like I've, a, I've had this habit of like whenever I start thinking hard, my mind wants to, to quit thinking hard. So it looks for that easiest excuse. What's an easy excuse to stop thinking hard? Let's, let's open our phone real quick. Let's see what's going on in there. And it's yeah. just, it just happens. So get that cell phone off your desk. That's my challenge to you, Allison. I'm going to take up that challenge as well. Again, I've been doing it just for a little bit now. I I really can't wait to be able to proclaim that it really is helping me because I can't tell yet, but I hope it does. I have to add one thing that's so fascinating. Have you ever done muscle testing? It's another way to test food allergies where they hold the food up to your body and see how your body reacts. And if your muscles can stand then um, you're fine. And if your muscles go weak when that food is near you, then you are uh, allergic or your huh. body does not no, like I've that never food. Have you ever tried it. this? No. Oh my God. Well, try it. Um, you know, I'm sure Dr. Cabral can tell us more about this, but it's a <laughs> fascinating phenomenon where you can take things out of your fridge, hold them to your body and see how your muscles react. And when you hold a cell phone or any digital device, your body reacts just as if it was a food that it was absolutely allergic to. Wow. So another reason to get those cell phones away from your person, away from your body as much as possible. Certainly do not sleep with them in the same room as you are sleeping because just like you just said, that is such a distraction such. and it can keep you up all night. Just the fact that it's in the room plus the EMFs that we don't really know the detrimental effects yet. What I have studied and learned and heard is that, you know, these are cancer causing devices. And so as much as I need them in my life, as much as I can turn them off, I will. Yeah, Fire Nation. And we haven't even been able to get into EMS and that's a whole nother topic. But you know, right now, as I'm speaking to Allison, I'm at my standing desk. What am I standing on? A grounding mat. Like I'm on a grounding mat. And under my pillow, I have a grounding pad as well. And just like, these are just little things that just ground you, that really detract from the EMS that, you know, are just, they're there. They're all around us. And you know, this is the thing is people that aren't into this stuff, Allison, they're just like, oh my God, this is so overwhelming. There's like so many things to worry about. And yes, it is. But you just have to look at it like a game. Like Allison, you know, is saying, and I'm saying like, just try one thing at a time, see what works, see what doesn't work. If it really makes you feel better, you're probably going to want to keep doing it. If it doesn't, then just forget about it because you can't do everything. And, um, you know, one of the things I really do want to kind of move into as we kind of, you know, get towards the end of our chat here is meditation, that whole attitude about gratitude, forgiveness, journaling, manifestation. So can you kind of move into that a little bit and talk about how you're implementing that into your life? Yes. Well, one of the things I've learned on this journey is, um, you know, first I discovered the food and the physical and I was like, all right, I got to do my diet and exercise. And once I had kind of conquered that, which I'm still conquering it all, but once I had never ends in a good way, right? Yeah. But I was like, there's still something missing. And for me, I realized that I hadn't dealt with the grief of losing my parents. And so here I am eating the best food I can eat, doing yoga, going, doing cleanses, all this stuff, but I'm still not 
100% at my best, thriving and happy. And so I realized that I hadn't truly grieved. And I didn't know what that looked like. No one teaches you in school that there's seven steps of grief or how to deal with that. I just pushed it down. I didn't know any better. So I really had to uncover that. And the thing that I discovered that was most impactful for me was that forgiveness opens the door to freedom. And forgiveness can be, you may have to forgive a parent, or you may have to forgive a friend, or in my case, I had to forgive the pharmaceutical companies that I blamed for murdering my parents. You know, whatever we've conceived of in our minds that is only true to us, that isn't truly reality, but it's the truth that we have concocted based on our experiences. We have to let go of that. And I had to do a lot of forgiveness work, not only on others, but also on myself. So I had to forgive myself for the judgments that I made at the time. So one of my big ones was that I judged the world and I judged that I was alone because my parents left me. And so I had to do everything on my own. So I created this judgment around the world, which had some good things. It made me a hustler, but also had some bad things. It got me to the point where I wasn't even fun to be around because I was so concerned with how I was going to make it in the world because I had been left and I was on my own and no one could help me. I made all of these decisions that weren't reality. And so I had to go back in time and forgive myself for the judgments I made at the time that I made them. And I made them because I was in fear. I was in terror. I was a little girl who lost mommy and daddy. And I didn't work on that. I pushed it all down. And so for me, I have a lot of practices that have worked like writing things down. So if I'm currently in my present day and I'm driving and someone cuts me off and I'm like, how dare you, you piece of, you know, right? Totally. Am I really, am I really mad at that person? I'm mad at myself. There's something unresolved that I need to work on. Now, I'm not saying that that guy was not an a-hole for cutting me off or whatever. Sure. But what am I really upset about? Because if I'm in my peace and I'm in my loving state, I'm going to say, you know what? I hope you get to where you're going with grace and ease. And that tells me, that reflects back to me, I'm in a good place. But if I'm angry as heck and I'm screaming at that guy, I know there's something unresolved within myself. And so I'm all about forgiveness because forgiveness is freedom. So once I started implementing these practices into my life of forgiveness, things started to change and I started to show up better in my life with people that I loved. I was able to be there for them in a way I wasn't able to before. I was able to show up for myself and love and respect myself in a way that I hadn't been able to for a long time since I had been through my trauma. So trauma is tragic, but it's also opportunity to heal ourselves and to become better versions of ourselves so that we can heal ourselves and heal others. And so I'm all about self-forgiveness and meditation and, you know, the ways to get there are through breath and music for me. Totally. And this is actually so powerful because Fire Nation, meditation, gratitude, forgiveness, journaling, manifestation, they played such a huge role in my life. I mean, obviously, both the freedom and mastery journal that I've created, you know, those have been great business successes, but they're also great personal successes because I use these tools to help me every single day. And gratitude, like there's a reason why both of those journals start with, I am grateful for colon because I know that when I start my day with, with something that I'm grateful for, it changes the entire energy and vibe of the entire day that's in front of me. And yeah. when I was just recently thinking, Allison, like I'm going to stop doing a daily show with Entrepreneurs on Fire, that was a really tough decision on my part. But I said, what can I bring to you know the world that is something daily, that is of value? Because I just love the fact that I was putting something out in the world daily that was of great value for 2,000 days in a row as part of my identity. But I knew it was time to move away from that for an interview-based show and into a more audio masterclass like this. Because, you know, hey, we're moving on to minute 51 right now. You and I could never have had this conversation on the old format because, you know, I have right. my interviews stacked up, you know, 40, 40, 40, 40, and I'm doing 15 to 20 minute interviews and we're getting great stories, but then we're getting out and it's done. This is a different interview. This is going to be an interview that I know certain listeners are going to listen to six, seven, eight times because it's going to be just that impactful for them. It's going to be that audio masterclass. So I knew it was time to shift for that reason to make some incredible impactful episodes, but I still wanted to give that that 
daily value to the world that I really built my brand on. And that's why I launched the daily podcast, The Daily Refresh. And when I was coming up with a concept for this, I was like, what are the three things that I do every single day that really move the needle that I can bring into a podcast? There's a lot of things I do, but what are three things I do that really move the needle that I can bring into a three minute podcast? And I came up with, I read quotes. I love quotes. They inspire me. They make me think. And so the daily refresh starts with a quote to inspire the mind. What's something else I do? I start my day with gratitude because gratitude sets that 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 mode, that mindset like I shared. So that's number two with the daily refresh. I share, share something unique to be grateful for. <laughs> like uh, the other day, Allison was jokes, like a really funny joke. And I actually told this joke on the daily refresh and it was just, you know, it cracked me up. And then, uh, you know, everybody that listened to it was like, that was so funny. Tell more jokes. And it was just like, no, Oh, that was that was just for that episode. This is not a show, show about jokes. And then the last thing I do is I do guided breathing. I do that the Samavriti uh, equal breathing practice of five cycles of four in, four out. Just you know, it's not meant to be this this perfect breathing practice. It's meant to just get people quickly in the morning to be. In, um, intentional and in thinking about their breathing and doing belly breathing, not just chest shallow breathing and really getting the good oxygen into the world. So it's just a quote, gratitude and guided breathing, boom, in three minutes. And it's a podcast. It's part of your Amazon flash briefings. I have to whisper that or Amazon or Alexa will start talking to me right now. But as part of that as well, like I wanted to just make it available to the world because those three things are huge. So Allison, that being said, we are coming up on an hour, which is crazy of us chatting right now. And it's been an amazing hour. So why don't you just take a minute? There's no rush at all. So take your time, maybe kind of button this chat up with a few final takeaways you want to make sure that we have and then give us a parting piece of guidance and uh, then we'll say goodbye. Absolutely. I would love to. I mean, we could talk forever. This is such a great conversation. (laughs) And I love your other show too. Um, I think the only thing that we didn't get to, and I love the gratitude piece because that is the piece that I go to after the forgiveness work. So that's perfect. Um, is really uh, the next step I had to do was find my financial flow. And so a lot of times what we have to do is we can be hustling and not making money and not understanding why, because we know that we have a message to share and make an impact on the world with. And so sometimes we have to let go of these childhood misbeliefs around money and around what our parents told us. And what I realized for myself was that my self-worth was my net worth. And so we have to realize that our financial situation is a direct reflection of how you feel about yourself, right? And so if we're sitting here feeling like we can make a difference, but we don't deserve money to make that difference, then we will stay in poverty, right? And so I'm all about money mentality and affirmations and all of that stuff. But an affirmation doesn't work if you don't do the inner work. If you don't go back to that childhood moment when your dad said money don't grow on trees or whatever memory it was that created that misbelief in your world. And so I'm all about figuring it out, healing it in the past so that it heals in the present so that we can accept all the abundance that we deserve to truly serve the world and make ourselves known in whatever mission it is that we want to accomplish in this life. So if we wanted to get more greatness from yourself and we talked about the Food Heals podcast, what are some other ways that we can connect with you and any goodies you have for Fire Nation? And then we'll say goodbye. Of course, you know, I made something for Fire Nation. (laughs) Yay. Um, It is Health Hacks for Busy Entrepreneurs. And it's really about how to transform your health and business in under 30 minutes a day. So you can get that at www.foodhealsnation.com slash fire. We're going to talk about a lot of what JLD and I have talked about today, but we'll get more in depth into some of the things we didn't get to. I'll teach you how to burn hundreds of calories in just minutes a day, a motivation method that increases productivity by 80%. I've got a healing cocktail that boosts your immune system. And one thing you can do every day to reduce your risk of heart attack by 60%. Actually, we talked about it. So the quiz is, do you know what it is? <laughs> <laughs> it rhymes with dim for red bana. <laughs> 
<laughs> yep, you got it. So you can go to foodhealsnation.com, click on help hacks or www.foodhealsnation.com slash fire. Fire Nation, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And you've been hanging out with AM and JLD today. So keep up the heat and head over to eofire.com. Type Allison in the search bar. Her show notes page will pop up with everything that we've been talking about today. These are the best show notes in the biz. Timestamps, links galore. And of course, for your health hacks for busy entrepreneurs, and we all know that you're an entrepreneur and we all know that you're busy, visit foodhealsnation.com slash fire. Allison, thank you for sharing your journey with Fire Nation today. For that, we salute you and we'll catch you on the flip side. Thank you so much. Hey, Fire Nation, hope you enjoyed our chat with Allison today. And are you ready to rock your podcast? I hope so. (laughs) Check out our free podcasting course where I teach you how to create, grow, and monetize your podcast at freepodcastcourse.com. And I will catch you there or I'll catch you on the flip side. Turn your small e-commerce business into the next big thing with Klaviyo. Klaviyo is the easy to use email and SMS platform that gives you everything you need to build genuine relationships with your customers. Give it a try with a free account at klaviyo.com slash fire. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O.com slash fire. Stories are what help us connect and relate, which is why I'm hearing someone else's story to success can help us clearly map out our own. That's why I'm excited to share the Female Startup Club podcast. Tune in for stories and insights from the world's most successful female founders today. Listen to the Female Startup Podcast wherever you get your podcasts.